Governance Elections Advocacy and Research Services Gears Initiative Zambia, in conjunction with Action Aid Zambia, has embarked on a campaign debt. Operation Serve the Constitution. We say no collision government. No deputy ministers. No removal of workers on payroll before paying their benefits. No election of mayors, chairpersons by councillors, but residents. No two years resignation for civil servants to participate in active partisan politics. No to NDF resolutions in the constitution. Support the campaign. Talk to your MP to say no two-third majority in Parliament for the NDF Draft Constitution Bill 2019. 2019. Join the campaign now and be counted. It's Operation Serve the Constitution. Gears, a voice of democracy and electoral integrity. Zambia has over years been making adjustment to its supreme law, the constitution. And that has been a different forest such as instances where stakeholders gather in one place or views of stakeholders are collected countrywide. Recently, the country saw a national forum being put in place through an act of parliament called the National Dialogue Forum Act. The NDF Act, which has now since been repealed, gathered stakeholders to discuss a number of issues in the constitution, though with focus on some key thematic areas that political parties that sat in Siavonga in 2018 prescribed. The key areas were separation of power and judicial independence, tolerance, civility in politics and public order act, the electoral reform act and the political parties bill. After the 16-day sitting of the NDF, three bills, namely the Draft Constitution of Zambia Amendment Bill 2019, the Draft Electoral Process Amendment Bill 2019, and the Draft Public Order Bill 2019 were adopted. Following the adoptions made, Various stakeholders that included those that attended and those that ever attended expressed concerns. It was by that that a local civil society organization called Governance Elections Advocacy Research Services, GEARS Initiative Zambia, with the support from Action Aid, embarked on provincial tours with a view of getting people's views on national matters, especially that pertaining to the National Dialogue Forum, NDF. GIA's team from 18th to 22nd of June 2019 visited Mansa, Lopula province to engage stakeholders on resolutions of the National Dialogue Forum, NDF. Led by Executive Director Mark Donald Chibenzi, GIA's had a series of meetings with different stakeholders in the province. Uh, GIA's, like your NGOs coming, you are energizing us. Honestly speaking, just from the way to go, the NDF to me, I just call it a national, a national disastrous forum. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that had come out which was actually helping, the, helping us as, as, as Zambians. If you remember very well, there, we have been having a lot of these uh, constitutional review commissions where people could speak mm -hmm. their mind and people could come up with their resolu good resolutions. But Went, went into politicians, uh, us as politicians, they could be saying, no, we know you need a test of time, we need a test of time, we don't know that test of time when it will come. But fortunately, last time when Edgar uh, was sworn in, I mean, he, he had to append the signature on, on the constitution. What has gone wrong? It's just one term that they, are, they again want to change. Yes. No. The surprising thing uh, actually, which came so prominently in the NDF process is to bring 
other clauses in the constitution which was not agreed upon. Uh, the critical element that people were looking at were the electoral reforms. It's not to amend the constitution, but to, to the surprise, because we followed that process with keen interest, actually we saw other clauses which meant to benefit certain sect of individuals started coming in the NDF process. Then we were handling to say, this the electoral reforms we are talking about in terms of the public conduct. They also engaged people through local radio station Twitter FM, where locals had their views on the NDF and its resolutions. Why in the broadcast? Now, sir, the problem is that uh, you have this NDF thing going on. Mm. But the majority of the people do not understand the English that is there. You know, the majority of voters are in the top of the area. Mm. Why can't you, as gears, yes. influence the government to produce that document in local languages so that these people understand what is going on? Mm. So that this country is uh, taken forward. Correct. Of course, we, I agree with uh, the, the comrade mm. from the broadcasting yes. that indeed we need these things to be produced in local language. Mm -hmm. What we we'll do as gears mm -hmm. is to summarize mm -hmm. what we have mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. into local language. Mm -hmm. The young people were equally consulted. So we as a youth movement, we have strongly condemned and uh, on several occasions we have been on media issuing statements. We have called local stations here like Chuta Radio, KFM and Yangen. We have actually come out very strongly to condemn the ideas vis-a-vis uh, -vis the issue of the deputy ministers, the issues to do with the giving power back to the councillors to elect what we are, we are, we are calling as, as ceremonial mayors, not mayors that are being elected by the masses. What is this uh, mini dialogue all about? Mm. Those who didn't have even an opportunity to open the parliament radio and listen to it, people were caught unaware. So, your MP consult you? nothing comes, came as a, as a matter of representation from the MP. Mm. We were trying to ask who is representing Wapola? Mm. Because even look at the composition, eh? your composition of the, the, the civil society or the category of the youth. The team also sought views from traditional leadership as they met Chief Chisunka of Mansa. Ministers and my MPs of the Parliament were president. Babu and my constituencies, Yahoo, by a tampoo which the campaign. Who could go to a tampoo club of a campaign of government in the sources who tampoo could have a day bomb and a cabinet if you have to have territorial shape beyond this in an administration to be there. If you to trade panga, if you move from the trade panga, take party, you know, you start to shy you. If you to have a up to 30 years from now, she took a shy and a country. To push our deputy minister, say 30 years from now, the economy is still going. Omo tuike the money show me to lay to the fire by shaft, but not going to be so. No matter who they put on camp, you could have put on the leader of the country. Our deputy ministers, what fire by shaft from which one? What part one did? That we not one person. What part one did? Is to move anymore? Is to move more money? No, yo. Since the time that Zambia was proclaimed a Christian nation, the church has always had a strong voice in national issues, and hence, Gia's initiative Zambia could not leave the province without having an audience with the clergy, as it met the head of the Catholic Church in the province, who encouraged the team to stand and defend the people in all aspects of development, who also called for inclusiveness in the handling of national issues by those entrusted. We will remain a prophetic voice 
uh, founded on the, the dynamics between God and the people of Old Testament, where the prophets would tell the leaders what God wants. And many times it turned out that the leaders did not obey mm. the prophetic voice. Mm. And they found themselves in trouble. Mm. And they appealed to the prophets to speak and intercede for them and promise to change their ways. Mm. I think we're going through this same uh, vicious cycle. Mm. Look, this has happened before the church <coughs> and the church brought back and the church you know, called names mm. and so mm. forth. So we'll patiently do uh, carry out our prophetic mandate because it's really something from God and also uh, be patient mm. with the powers that be. But I think you cannot take God too much for granted. I think sometimes people just take things too much for, for granted and play. As the provincial tour was getting to a close, a stakeholders meeting was organized where a number of organizations that included political parties, the church, trade unions, women, youth, and disability organizations, among others, turned up to share their views on national matters, especially on the National Dialogue Forum resolutions. Where you go some the churches? Okay, maybe when we, they finished, did they come back to say this is what we have resolved as MPs? And this is all over. Whether opposition held or ruling party held, no one went back. No one went in before they went in or before they refused or before they, after they came back from the NDF, none of that, them have gone back to say this is what we, we discussed and these are the resolutions. And that is how our representative democracy is 40. What came out, who, who were there as uh, uh, delegates to NDF Act? Could it be the right process uh, which could produce a, a constitution amendment or refinement that could be accepted by the, all our citizens? So we are here today as the uh, Lapula delegates just to begin to see how we can, uh, we, we can uh, organize ourselves to demand for accountability from our leaders, to demand for transparency in the constitution making process, and above all to ensure that our elected leaders do not proceed with this uh, NDF enacting the NDF resolutions. Let us just have a popular president and this constitution, our constitutions are failing to uh, last the test of time because they are meant to preserve a person. So like, look at the, the 1996, that constitution was against Kaunda, that clause, it was against Kaunda. And let's look at uh, even now these changes or in this forum was about two persons. They wanted to get rid of Akainde and they want to promote Lungu. They have been coming together, forming alliances. Before the election time, they dismantle themselves. Problem starts. But what if they form a corrosion government? We are going to have uh, a, a, a lot of challenges. We are going to be doomed. So we don't want that. Let them just be, I, I mean, I, I mean let's, yes, like the way they are. We want to see who are the best leaders. We choose them by their credit or merit or distinctions. <laughs> and then, if we are going to agree with this pro uh, proposal, it means our uh, constitution has to be redone. The constitution must be redone. We remove the 50 plus one. 
to facilitate this thing. And collisions are not stable uh, uh, governments. The gathering looted the Constitution of Zambia Amendment Bill 2019, which seeks to amend the Constitution of Zambia. And one by one, the critical issues were scrutinized, starting with the preamble, which has a provision of affirmation of Zambia as a Christian nation. And if we remove that and say we are a Christian nation and not mouth, what about these other religious institutions? Where do they stand in Zambia? This is anomaly number one. Is anomaly number one. Let it remain the way it is. When Zambia is declared a Christian nation, and when it is declared a Christian nation, uh, it should have also a backing of it in the constitution. Uh, whichever language you use, the fact remains that people in this country have the freedom of worship, they, they have the freedom of conscience. So in essence, whether we write Maori or just uh, bluntly Christian nation, at the end of the day, we stand for Christian values. Election of members of parliament was also discussed. We find that those who have ambition like uh, simple servants, it will be very difficult for them uh, to contest and become members of, of parliament. And only then we find that uh, there are a lot of things that will make people to start thinking to say, if I resign, what about my wife? What about uh, you no know, children? What about ABCD? What about this? And in the long run, we find that uh, this country will continue pro producing uh, politicians who are not quality, who are cadres only, who are recycled. Eh? And those are the, are the things now they want to you not know, to pre they, they want just to continue recycling themselves. When are we going to become members of parliament in the civil servant? <laughs> It's, it's an issue actually in Zambia. So we are saying, you know, let's not bring certain issues to prevent or which have certain self-interest for, for, for the purpose of being, you know, continuing to be in this office. Dissolution of the National Assembly was equally put on the table. So that uh, the resources are not uh, squandered. I mean, uh, squandered. Because it's when they do all they feel to do. It's when they sweep all the resources. So they have to be out of office 90 days before the election. Looking at what happened in 2016, a lot of resources were misused. I can tell during these very elections, some of the ministers, that's when they're even doing their monitoring and evaluation of projects throughout the nation. It's using the government resources, getting unnecessarily allowances every day, and leaving the Zambians people. We are not dogmas. We are Zambians, and we should share the Zambian cake equally. Not whereby just a few percent of people having a big share of Zambian cake, we are not going to allow it, and we don't agree to this. It's that these are not special people. We have no place. They are permanent secretaries. Right? They will continue running the ministries. Those are professional civil servants who are qualified to run the ministries. So please, the issue of them still, why, why are they saying no to the civil servant two years ago without even, then they were removed from where? Your salary. Then they are on salary. One heated issue during the discussion was the period for hearing and determination of a presidential election petition. Let's look at a very simple day. What is a day? If you ask somebody what is a day, somebody will say 24 hours. If you go to me and you say what is a day, I'll tell you eight hours. Because I only work for, as a teacher, I'm, I'm paid for the day, but I teach for eight hours. 
if I ask my pastor, what is a day? He may say his day is only two hours because he's only yeah. preaching two hours, but he'll be paid for, for the day. The third calendar day, sitting on Sunday, Monday, and you can even hold them to account. Why did you sit on Sunday? So whether you are a church going, the pastor there, okay, so we agree with 13 calendar days, we move on. The issue of electing mayors and council chairpersons by either from among councillors themselves or the general public was equally discussed. Reintroduction of deputy ministers in government had its fair share. A number of issues such as the retiring of civil servants two years before an election and many others were discussed in the meeting. The period for campaign was also discussed. A very uh, wrong period. So, mathematically, even 90 days is not enough for, uh, to, 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 just to borrow the statement from Pastor Bashir, who was saying, even in, uh, at, at presidential level, a presidential candidate cannot even manage to go around the whole 156 constituencies within 90 days. It's, it's impractically impossible. So, it's a pity that we, have, uh, we haven't been given a, a space to, to make another submission. I personally would have maybe increased from 90 to 120, or even to 156 days. So even the 90 days wasn't uh, enough for, for a new uh, contender in this issue. Issues will be actually rushed. So when we are talking about uh, the number of days uh, actually to do the, the campaign, we must also take into consideration that it's only not the, the campaign aspect. There are also other things that are involved in terms of civic education, people should know, and also people should know the president they are voting for. They are members of parliament, the councillors they are voting for. Because normally, those are normally that actually come out. And the 90 days, we find that if we consider what is involved in an election, very simple like what my colleague has said. In fact, there was a post even to increase from, you know, uh, three months to four months so that we have ample time even people to sell the manifesto. The problem is still the other political leaders, if they want to go where they feel to go, are they given a chance to go? The answer is no. So what is needed is themselves, leaders, political leaders, even, even if, in fact, if the ruling party should be on top, to say, let every leader go where he feel to go, as long as he guided with what? The law. Simple. But these, these resolutions do not mean well to the democracy. So for me, I would really doubt, just say this is, they were just trying to get, to rap the constitution, which maybe I could urge this August House to say that, gentlemen, let's reject this. This is the, the disaster to the, to the nation. The issues it was supposed to address, dialogue was the one which was supposed to be addressed. And who were fighting? It was PF, Lungu in particular, and UPND, Hakainde in particular, the person that took uh, uh, the other party to court. So in short, we have not dialogued. And as such, we have not resolved a single thing. We would want the dialogue to go on as it was planned. Only four of the total 14 discussed National Dialogue Forum resolutions were agreed to by the Mansa meeting. Of democracy. The proposed coalition government approach is merely a simple majority that the Zambian citizens have consistently rejected. We encourage all political parties to work hard and attend 50 plus 1 first time or during the presidential runoff. Two, resolution of parliament after five years. 
we are really confounded at the NDS proposal to only dissolve of parliament after the general election period as past and not three months before the election as it constitutionally provided which provision was upheld by the Constitutional Court of Zambia in 2016. We find the proposal unfair as it is entirely meant to perpetuate incumbency and in the case of ministers and MPs. This also brings us to the proposal that mayors, council chairpersons of various town councils will no longer be elected by the residents of their respective district but by fellow councillors. We find this proposal contrary to the will of the people as expressed in the current constitution. We entirely reject this proposal. Six, Electoral Process Act amendments. We find the Electoral Process Amendment proposed by the NDF too superficial as they do not address most of the fundamental contentious electoral issues. The period is rather short, especially for newcomers and works in favor of the incumbent. We note that Zambia has more district and constituencies than the number of 60 days provided. We therefore reject in stronger terms this resolution and uphold 90 days provided in the current law. B. The proposal to have the amendments to extending the number of days for petitions from 14 to 30 calendar days is more definitive, is, is more progressive and has been upheld by this August House. C. We find a proposal to have the Electoral Commission determine the symbols of independent candidates, a violation of rights of the candidates to self-identity as symbols are associated with the personal ideology and identification of such candidates. We therefore outrightly reject this proposal as it does not reflect individual identity and D, the requirement for civil servants to step down from their post from their posts for two years before prior to the election if they aspire for election is undemocratic and discriminatory and we therefore reject that particular proposal. Uh, we submit that the period of leaving civil service must be shortened to 90 days. We also call on the parliamentarian not to temper with the Article 189 of the current constitutions. Constitution. Employers must continue to pay employees after retirement until their pension graduates are fully paid. Public Order Act. We note with the dismay that the NDF resolution on regression that perpetuates the status quo, especially given the arbitrariness of implementation. This piece of registration has continued to ignite anger and outrage and has resulted in current tensions. The proposed changes merely favor the party in power. Conclusion. Conclusion. Generally, the NDF resolutions should not, should not form the basis for defining or amending the constitution. It is also our considered view that dialogue never took place and we demand that the dialogue process be revived to allow national peace, building and the reconciliation of the nation take place. We further appeal to our leaders especially, we call on the Republican President, His Excellency, the President Edgar Chagwarungu and the United Party for National Development President Agai Nehichinema to allow the church-led dialogue take place as a forum, we have only agreed to four resolutions out of the 14 resolutions so far published.
Governance Elections Advocacy and Research Services GEARS Initiative Zambia, in conjunction with Action Aid Zambia, has embarked on a campaign debt. Operation Serve the Constitution. We say no collision government. No deputy ministers. No removal of workers on payroll before paying their benefits. No election of mayors, chairpersons by councillors, but residents. No two years resignation for civil servants to participate in active partisan politics. No to NDF resolutions in the constitution. Support the campaign. Talk to your MP to say no to third majority in Parliament for the NDF draft constitution bill 2019. 2019. Join the campaign now and be counted. It's Operation Serve the Constitution. Gears, voice of democracy and electoral integrity.